Okay, and now for the last video, at least of this first sequence. Okay, and now for the last video of this first sequence of questions for the Apple Vision Pro developer. Uh, how do you further increase the immersion of an Apple Vision Pro immersive scene using particles? And particles in this example and in many others are going to be used to simulate things like weather, although they could be used for a million other things. That's what we'll work through today. Uh, so same old, same old. We'll create a new project. We will call this one weather. And we will jump right in. Okay, so we have our scene building. Surprise, surprise. Fake out there with Radicate content, nothing really wrong. I will do what I've been doing and I will cut out all the fluff here. Just keep the two spheres coming up for now in that black environment and we will jump down back into this Ooh. floating orb Caleb into this Reality Composer Pro application. So we're back here where we're hoping to work on a new scene and same thing kind of like with sound. I'm going to create a new scene here and we can call it in this case, just snow. Um, snow is a fun one. It doesn't have to be snow for you, obviously. Um, but I will close this scene out. Make sure we open up the right scene here. Snow. And we will look to add a particle emitter. Now, the long story short of particles is you have a bunch of tiny, tiny objects that can be used uh, from an emitter, which releases them to accomplish some sort of intended uh, visual outcome. Again, it could be things like bubbles, it could be things like fireworks. The six that come kind of baked into Reality Composer Pro are fireworks impact, which is like fog or clouds. Uh, you have magic, which is just a bunch of sparklers, rain, snow, and sparks. So uh, these are the six that are in here now, but it could be really anything that you're emitting a ton of things for. A common example from Apple was using particles, I think it was sparks, to make it look like a rocket 3D model was taking off, so they attached an emitter to the bottom of that. But long story short, it's a really, really effective way to create an atmospheric sort of presence because you can control thousands and thousands and thousands of tiny visual objects. Uh, but in this case, we are going to click snow, and you'll notice right away some things are set up pretty well for us. We have an emission duration that loops, which is good because it We'll just keep going until we exit the immersive scene. You can change a lot of things about where it's coming out of, how it looks, uh, the birth location, the birth direction. Uh, right now, the emit direction is set to negative one Y, which means it's coming down, which is what we want. Uh, and we want it to be emitting, so we don't have to start or stop this. Uh, the one thing that we'll look at here is it doesn't really do us a whole lot of good for this particle emitter to exist straight on the ground of where we would be sitting otherwise. So um, the snow would be going out our feet, which isn't quite the immersive experience we're looking for. Uh, so we'll go ahead and bump this position uh, scale into feet. Could be meters. We can just do meters. And for this case, let's go ahead and set it just to two. And that should raise us up. We'll zoom out. About that high in the air. So about six feet in the air, sitting down. For most people, that's just above their ceilings. I would say another foot or two, so it'll look like it's coming down through the ceiling once it's fully ready to go, or about that height, which is perfect. So we will save this for now. Again, the emitter is pretty well set up for us. You could change a lot here to fine tune things, uh, but we wanna look now at the particles. So we have particles with a birth rate and a burst count. A lot of these can be expanded to add some variation, so it's a little less consistent, but. For our case, we want it to be heavy snow, so we'll add more of these particles. So instead of just 500 flakes of snow coming down, we've got uh, 1,000. And if we click play here, that's kind of what we're looking at. Now, what you'll notice right away is the snow is pretty clumped together, and it's also not falling all the way to the ground. So there's a couple things we can do to fix that. The first is we can adjust the size of the emitter to be a little bit bigger. So if we double the size of this in all aspects, we should have a much wider grid. And we could probably do that one more time to have a pretty wide uh, like range of where the snow is actually falling. Now, the problem with the snow not hitting the ground still is happening. And the reason for that is you actually have to define the size, which is not what we're looking at now, but the lifespan. Uh, the lifespan in this case is only set to three seconds. So that's not going to really work for us. 
I'd say three seconds is getting us about a third of the way. So if we set it to 12, we'll just wait a second to see. Now we've got more coming down into the actual scene. Again, we want to get it close to the actual ground. Are we getting close enough? And I think at this point, if we're falling for 12 seconds and still not hitting the ground, which we're starting to scratch it a little bit, but we're not quite there. The battery's getting low is we will actually look at this emitter and say maybe we're a little too high. So if we put this down to 1.6 meters, see how that feels. We will see if the snow makes it down closer to where we maybe hope or expect it to hit. So we're getting good spread on the flakes. And I'd say, yeah, this is a lot closer to what we actually want when it comes to having these live long enough to actually reach the user. So that looks good. Some of the other options that you can look at here at the particle, excuse me, portion. Again, we have a thousand coming in bursts. Uh, you can set the size. These look like pretty good sized flakes. So I won't actually increase those too much. You can add variation, which is where it maybe gets a little bit more fun. So we'll add the potential for really big, early small flakes. Um, lifespan we've already set. We'll go another two seconds on there because it looks like some of them are getting to the bottom, but not all the way. And then here's the cool thing you can add with like some wind. And we'll bump this up to 0.5. And this will add a little bit more variety of just how much we're having the wind spread out some of these flakes. So uh, you can add vortex, uh, an attraction aspect of it. And this one is more of that noise, which is wind in this case. So we'll save this, which is cool. And it's really easy from there on to work with it in our immersive view. So we'll jump back to the immersive view. Again, we chopped out everything that doesn't really seem to be all that relevant. And we will just paste in, or I'll just paste in this quick little closure. And all this is doing is it's saying, hey, I want to add another scene. Can you please fetch the scene called Snow from my bundle? And if it doesn't find it, then it'll give us this error, but it should find it because we just made it. And then it will add that to the scene, uh, to our content scene where we already have the two spheres. So we have this all in here now. If we run play, have it actually sent to the simulator. This will load up once again. We will click to show the immersive space. Don't show me again. And here we are. And these flakes look actually pretty dang big. So I think our quick lesson will be, hey, we can raise this up a little bit more and we can lower the size of the flakes because they're pretty big. So we'll go ahead and jump out and do that. Before we go, we'll leave this space. Still looks really cool. Oh, it's the conundrum with my mouse not working. Okay, but we'll go back. We'll jump into Reality Closer Pro again. And our two quick fixes will be, we will raise this back up to where we had it before. If not, go a little bit higher. And then we will look at the particles and we will make them a lot smaller. So size, we'll go another decimal place and we'll just see if those look too small now but yeah in our quick glance there they were really big so we'll jump again to the vision pro this is the quick really kind of fun way of interacting with the particles again you get a lot of effect really quickly which is fun so we'll enter here and this time they'll be a lot higher so we'll see if they start falling yeah so again lesson learned here is we probably bring them a little bit lower the flakes are maybe a little bit small, but I guess that's probably pretty realistic for what you'd expect from snow. If you're in a snowstorm. And it looks pretty decent in the simulator, actually, but in the headset, I'm excited to see what it looks like even more. So what I'll do now is I'll just stop this for the time being. I'll make one last quick tweak with the scene before we hop in the headset, and that's just to uh, I'm going to lower it down just a little bit because it took a while for it to get to us. We'll go 2.2 meters, and then the particles, what I'm going to do is bump up the size one more time, which is ironic because I know we just were in here. We will go 0 0.005, and I'll decrease this for variation, actually, and then... Size over life, math, lifespan. What I want to slow down a little bit is just some of that speed. So let me see. 
Y span angle velocity. So we'll bump this down in half. Cool, and what we'll do for this one is we've seen it in simulator twice. It looked pretty good last time. We'll go ahead and jump right into the Vision Pro with this, see how it looks, and then again, uh, kind of wrap up our first iteration of these videos, see if they're helpful for you guys, and we'll go from there. So I'm in the headset now. We'll start you know, loading up. Should be our same old, same old landing page here. We'll show the immersive space. Don't show it again. We should be immediately greeted by, ooh, a ton of these little snowflakes. And these actually look pretty trippy in here. I think uh, still a fun immersive scene. They spread out pretty well by the time they hit you, but a little bit more dense initially than maybe what we were looking for, but it actually feels really trippy right now. And again, maybe not super unrealistic for what a normal actual snowy scene would look like. So, uh, you know, iteration of, of this next would be maybe spreading them out one more time, widening that, or at least raising this up again. But I'd say, especially from here on out, like the snow actually looks pretty decent. Combine this with some of the sounds we already had, maybe a windy one for snow or a carol or something. Uh, you're in pretty good shape for what this could look like. So, yeah, there we go. Adding particles to your scene. And we'll say ready break.